Is NASA hiding evidence for life on other planets? Anonymous has made a claim that NASA is actually hiding evidence, literally, that there are aliens among us. And obviously, if you look at some of these ancient cuneiform tablets, you can absolutely tell that we've been visited from something that claims to be from outer space. And what I have done is compiled a bounty of information to share with you guys not only myth, folklore, science, astronomy. I'm compiling it all together. And could the Anunnaki actually come from the TRAPPIST-1 solar system that's about 40 light years away from Earth? Now, that's a long way away. But in galactic terms, it's almost like our next-door neighbor. Not quite our next-door neighbor, but down the street. So this first image that you're looking at right here, this is actually showing you an ancient cuneiform tablet that's been discovered that looks like three bird people, a UFO, seven dots, a star to the left, and a crescent moon to the right. And below them, you're going to see, that well, looks like Anu, the father of the Anunnaki, and his galactic ship, you know, pointing up saying, hey, look, this is where we come from. We come from the stars. Now, if you connect this to the TRAPPIST-1 system, you know, I wanted to share with you some recent articles that have came out. Alien hope as TRAPPIST-1 system may contain multiple life-bearing planets. Anonymous says NASA has evidence of alien life. Does it? Life on TRAPPIST-1 planets, rock-swapping swamp gas from Uranus may boost odds. <laughs> so, record-breaking amount of exoplanets that are being discovered. We're finding out that many planets that we thought, oh, never existed, are actually orbiting our own sun with strange and peculiar orbits, some of them 300 years, some of them 3,000 years, some of them 20,000 years. It's just fascinating. So I wanted to also share with you something that I found out about the TRAPPIST-1 system. This blew my mind. This absolutely blew my mind. It's in the Aquarius system, you guys. The TRAPPIST-1 system. It's in the Aquarius system, which is usually associated with the, um, the, the constellation represents the Callion the son of Prometheus, who survived the great flood along with his wife. Now, in Babylonian myth, the Aquarius is identified as Gula, the great one, the god Ea himself. Well, what does that mean? Let's take a look here. Because I hadn't heard this name before. The son of Prometheus. Decalion, or Decalion, is the son of Prometheus, Enki. Zia Sudra, is that who that is? Is this Zia Sudra? Is this Noah? Well, I certainly find this incredible to think about. And I'm also going to connect the dots. Let's go back to the TRAPPIST-1 system here for a moment. And let's take a look at the information that's available that makes me think of the conspiracy theories that are going around about Nibiru and what Nibiru actually is. Some people feel that Nibiru is Planet X. Some people feel that Nibiru is actually a small solar system with seven planets and a brown dwarf star. And this information right here, just to share with you, is it's seven planets... It's a, that orbit a brown dwarf star from the area of Aquarius. You can see it's out in the Aquarius constellation. The area where Enki is supposed to come from. So there's several dots there that I've connected. Now, as far as Nibiru goes, though, as far as Planet X being Nibiru 
and Nibiru being Planet 9, the orbit of Planet 9 doesn't go anywhere near the TRAPPIST system. You know, it's got supposedly a 10 to 20,000 year orbit. And I did the math. It would have to be traveling. It was over 50 million miles an hour for 20,000 years to make it 40 light years away. I mean, it was even more than that. It was, it was, the numbers were high. So if you, if you put into consideration that Mercury is considered an extremely fast orbiting planet that's about 107,000 miles an hour, and that's why it's linked to the Greek mythos of a very fast god, like the Flash, well, it's because it's orbiting the sun, the inner, you know, the inner planet of the sun. It orbits faster than the other planets. And if you consider even 100, so let's say this thing's moving at 110,000 miles an hour, traveling through the stars, and it had to go 40 light years to go orbit this brown dwarf star, because then I thought to myself, well, could this actually be the our binary star? Is this thing shot out 40 light years, and then this planet 9, this planet Nibiru, could it be orbiting 40 light years away? No, it's, it's not. But it's fascinating. It was an interesting thing to think about. I do think that planet 9 could be a force to be reckoned with in the future. Now, how far in the future, I don't know. I'll have to do some more math on that. Let me, let me go over some notes with you guys. I think this is very interesting. So, Sitchin said, once again, that planet X is about the same size as planet 9. Yeah, well, that's, that doesn't connect to the TRAPPIST system that, I talked to you guys, uh, talk, that I'm talking to you guys about. The Sumerian tablets that are thousands of years old, many of them you will see have seven dots. Does that represent the Pleiades system of the seven sisters? Which it very well could. Or is that representing the TRAPPIST-1 system of the seven planets? Once again, Nibiru is either supposed to be a brown dwarf star a solar system of seven planets orbiting a brown dwarf star or planet X. Some people feel it might be a spaceship, and I think that's certainly a possibility. You know, it's a possibility. doesn't mean that's for sure by any means. So then you've also got at least three planets that are considered to be in the Goldilocks zone of this TRAPPIST-1 system. Now, even though it's 40 light years away, once again, that's still just a neighbor in galactic terms. So let's say that this is where they come from. I feel that the Orion's belt is going to have a key in terms of the conjunction point, for some reason, with the astral travel into the TRAPPIST-1 system, possibly, or the Stargate wormhole technology. It's about 235.2 trillion miles away. So it's a long way away. And also... Let me see, what other notes do I have out here for you guys? Yeah, here we go. If planet X is planet 9, and let's say this thing is orbiting this brown dwarf in the TRAPPIST-1 uh, Trappist system about 40 light years away, well, then that means it would have to travel at 65 billion, 333 million, 333,333 approximately miles per hour to orbit it in 3,600 years. It would have to travel at 1 million, 176, 1 billion, 176 million miles per hour to orbit it within a 20,000 year time period. So if planet nine has a 20,000 year orbit, and that's on the long spectrum. That's how fast it would have to go. And once again, Mercury's traveling at about 107,000 miles an hour. And that bad boy is cooking. That thing is cruising. That's the flash. So I don't know. I mean, I, I certainly don't think that this thing has taken a, uh, has a speed of anywhere close to that. And I don't think that, you know, if you do the math on how long that would have to orbit, it just, it would, none of it would make any sense as far as it orbiting the brown dwarf star of the TRAPPIST system. Now, with that said, the, I definitely think there's something to the TRAPPIST system, though, and the possibility of alien life because of everything that I've just been sharing with you. So, let, let's look at this again here for a minute. 
the Aquarius system, Enki, that's where Enki comes from. Let's take a look at some of these planets. And if you look at the Trappist-1 system, this is showing you the distance to the star that they orbit. And the star is a lot cooler. It's a lot smaller. So that's how they can do these variables that even though these planets are orbiting closer to the star, it's not as intense. Therefore, they're considered habitable. Now, once again, let's go back to this myth. Literally, Aquarius, where this constellation is, is associated with King Tros in Greek mythology. The constellation Aquarius. And then you've got the Kalion, the son of Prometheus, the son of Enki, right here. And then this also says that Toth is the son of Enki. I'll get into that in a minute. But this gentleman is also Zia Sudra, in my opinion. And then let's take a look at how far, once again, the Trappist-1 system is. It's about 39 and a half light years away. If there is a brown dwarf star within our solar system that we don't see, I would find that very fascinating. You know, I mean, maybe there's got to be some infrared or something. I don't know. I think there'd be able to be math and calculations that you could pick up on it, though, because I certainly haven't seen any evidence that I, am conf that I believe photographically yet. I've seen stuff that I thought was real, and then somebody debunked it. And there's been a few times I'm like, wow, that looks legit. And they're like, no, it's, look, this is how you debunk it because of the layers and the, the angles and da 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 and the, the film that they'll put over the, the, the lens to show a second sun or a second light source. Anybody can do that. You just need to have a filter, and then you can make Nibiru pop up any time you want. It's the camera. And even when I've seen video footage that showed a reflection off of the water, and it looked like that the second source was from behind the clouds, I've had people from right, the guy that runs the Right Side Up channel that did a really good job debunking that without a shadow of a doubt, and showed how even when you see these anomalies that look like they're behind clouds, or it looks like there's a second sun source that has a reflection on the water, it's actually just the different layers in the camera. It's like the different lenses in the camera, the different layers, in conjunction with if you put some type of green filter or sun filter over the camera itself, and then that will create a second light, and then you can move that around also. And so if you see it with your own eyes, and you take video footage of it with your, you know, get some video with your own eyes, that's one thing. I haven't talked to somebody that's seen it with their own eyes and has video footage that hasn't been debunked yet. And I'm more, I would love to see it, guys. I would, but I'd be freaked out at the same time. Not freaked out for more than a couple of minutes, and then I'd just be like, all right, this is awesome. I'm sure we'll figure it out. We'll just do that 1111 mind concept where we'll all think of transferring consciousness to a better place. And just literally, we'll, we'll move the planet out of the orbit where we won't have to worry about it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just messing around with you guys. But I think we're going to be fine, regardless. I think we're going to be fine. So when people say that I'm paranoid, I say, really? I'm excited, man. This is awesome. And just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you anyway. So, <laughs> joking. Joking. All right. So, Aquarius, Trappist-1, the Milky Way. This is just to give you an idea how big the Milky Way is. It's 100,000 light years across. How far is a light year? A light year is 5.88 trillion miles across. So take 5.88 times that by 100,000, and you have 5.88 million. Is that right? 5.88 million light years? No, wait. I was thinking 5.88 million times trillion. Never mind. All right, I'm divagating. I'll get into that in a minute. I'll have to do the math on that. Let's take a look at... I just shape-shifted for a minute. Nanu, nanu. All right. I've cut down on the nanu, nanu. I actually had to go into a, a monastery for a couple of days, and uh, they, they had to literally exercise these demons from me, and so there won't be as many nanu, nanus because they were able to eliminate some of those. So I apologize. But take a look at this. This is directly from NASA, and this shows the resonant dance of the seven Trappist-1 planets that orbit the brown dwarf star. Is this where the Anunnaki come from, ladies and gentlemen? And you know what? It's not doing anything because 
I am disconnected from the internet. Yep. Well, I don't know how long I've been talking, thinking that I have a live audience, but I am recording this at the same time. So right here, thank goodness I've loaded up most, most of these. This is the Planet 9 connection. And we talked a little bit about that before. Here, this is awesome. I think this is fascinating. Because take a look at this. Sirius, boom. Orion's belt, boom. Hades, boom. Pleiades, boom. You've got the different star clusters. This is a beautiful image, by the way, available at ancientcode.com. Now take a look at this. Now, I don't agree with everything on here, but I do think that this website, uh, or this, this image on this website, is, has got some, some very interesting points. Like, I don't know what the Ashtar command is. I don't, I, I don't believe in the Ashtar command, but I haven't done enough research to, to say that the Ashtar command never existed. So I'm not going to get into that. But that's for a whole other podcast that I don't even want to deal with. So you've got the Pleiades star cluster, they're saying, the seven dots representing the Pleiades star cluster, which definitely could be, or could it be representing these seven planets of the Trappist-1 system? Then you've got the, the, that star right there, I feel, is actually representing the dog star, the Sirius star. Uh, then it has the Anana moon symbol, and then it says that's in representation of Orion's belt. So if that's in representation of Orion's belt, you've got the Sirius star, you've got Orion's belt, you've got the, the Pleiades system, and then you've got the Hades cluster. Then See, but it's saying that Shemesh is the sim symbolism for the dog star system, and I don't know if I agree with that. I haven't done enough research into that yet. So I think this is a pretty cool thumbnail, so great job there. And then also you can see that the Pleiades system right here is connected with the dots now, this is available, I'll leave the link in the video description box, connecting to these Sumerian tablets that are ancient. You've got multitudes of these tablets that connect to there. And then I've, I've never seen this one before today, and I think this is a great Mesopotamian, ancient Mesopotamia clay tablet that has the Tree of Life, Adam and Eve. It has the, the winged creator from above. And you'll see three dots to the left, three dots to the right. So I don't know what those are representing. It looks like you've also got the, the winged, winged animals there. But that looks like the Garden of Eden, the, the Tree of Life. And then you've got the winged, something above it, which some people say could be Nibir. And it, and it could be. Now, I think this is in representation of Orion's belt. And then you've got these, these two animals that are, that are crossing like serpents, like snakes. I don't know what that represents necessarily maybe DNA, maybe that means that the DNA that we have came from Orion's belt. And then you can see here the, the Pleiades system, or is this the Trappist planets and the star that they orbit? Is that the Nibiru constellation? Is the Trappist system the Nibiru constellation? There's a different name. And I also want to share this with you as well, Enemy Mine, one of my favorite films growing up. I forgot about this and recently remembered, bringing back good memories, just thinking about it. The Reptilians and the humans mining different planets. And at first they're enemies, then they become friends. And then, remember in scriptures, man, this is bringing back just great memories. I was a little kid when I watched this. This came out in 85. And I remember Dennis Quaid, he's a great actor. Dennis Quaid was reading the Bible on this planet that was barren and yucky. And then this reptilian looking being started reading the same thing or something similar to that, and something similar to what I just described. It's been over 20 years since I've seen it. But then they both agreed because they were reading the same thing from different worlds, different tongues. And like, wow, well, yeah, God is God, and you know, we're in the image of God. So I thought that was fascinating, yet they're not, they don't look the same. <laughs> he didn't say they were in the image of God, but they said the same things happened or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly, but you get my point. I'm divagating. And here's another image, the seven dots, and where are we at here? This is the sun's closest neighbors. I wanted to share this with you to think about some possible connections when maybe our neighbor, brown dwarf star, if it got shot out somehow, if there were two stars at one point that were closer in the solar system that, that for whatever reason now are four light years away, you can see that this would maybe make the most sense because you've got some of the stars about four light years away. That's just a possibility. I wouldn't even say it makes the most sense, but I would say that would make more sense than something being 40 light years away being 
what could have been in this solar system or closer. Because when you really realize what a solar system is, the description of a solar system is an area that has, you know, the planets will all orbit a specific sun, a specific star. Well, look at these planets that we've discovered that go out over 20,000 years in orbits that go way outside of the Kuiper Belt, trans-Neptunian objects. Well, that paints, paints a whole new picture on what the solar system actually is. And this shows you the vision of the Kepler satellites and telescopes that are out there in space, giving you an idea on just how beautiful the Milky Way is. And I find it fascinating when you realize that from the galactic center, looks like a big eyeball, doesn't it? <laughs> well, we are on the third point, the third strand. We are the third planet from the sun, and this is the third strand from the galactic center. So as above, so below. I think that that's a, a very interesting connection point there. This is the interstellar medium that will give people an idea just how vast even before you get outside of the four light year, you know, so within four light years, this is about it right here. This is about four light years, about 23 trillion miles across. And then they're finding other rogue planets just about four light years away as well. Now, here is another incredible image that I wanted to share with you, the orbit of our sun. Look at this. This shows you how the sun actually orbits around with the spiraling of the galaxy. Even the galaxy moves. Nothing is stagnant. Everything is always moving in a fluid motion. And it's just incredible. The more you look outside, the more you find out that outside is within. And if you can be in sync with the, with the stars, I really feel that that's resonating at a higher level. You know, being your will, being your purpose, following your path, just like these stars are supposed to. It's, this is a really neat image right here. I like this just to get more perspective about how tiny we are in just this one galaxy. And there could be infinite galaxies, and there could be infinite universes outside of that. And it just can continue to flow in a harmonious fashion. And then I want to get into this with you guys on the next podcast. There is a diamond planet that's about 40 light years away from Earth as well. And I can't wait to, to know more about this. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to share this with you next time. Make sure to subscribe, youtube.com slash clandestinetimelord. Also, leakproject.com. Be the change you want to see. And I hope to see you at the X point for the Sturgis event. We're going to be out there in August. I might even be out there early. So if you're interested in having a like survival bunker and you don't want to drop 100 grand or a million bucks, but you want to have an open canvas to maybe even set up a studio or just have an off-the-grid off opportunity, well, check out TerraVivos.com. TerraVivos.com. So these are 2,000 square foot approximately concrete, still enforced military-grade bunkers, and you have about 200 feet on each side of you and literally $25,000 right now. And you have the cream of the crop, which ones you want to pick as far as location-wise, and water is going to be provided to these bunkers. So definitely check them out. Now, another neat thing as well is in South Dakota, you're about 30 minutes away from, you're actually less than 30 minutes away from the Black Hills. And it's beautiful out there. Sturgis, a lot of people spend big bucks going to Sturgis events. Well, you could actually go out here and hopefully nothing goes wrong every year. Go to Sturgis with your motorcycle, you know, take your, take your horses, take your ATVs, have a good time, and hopefully you could use that as an opportunity just to get out of the grid for a while if you want to spend a week out there, a weekend, a month, a couple months, whatever, and really enjoy the fruits of being outside of the matrix for a little while. So yeah, even though you're inside the matrix, you're outside the hive mind. Thank you, everybody, for being here with me. I don't know if the stream was even coming through because I haven't had access to the Internet while I've been doing this, but I will share this with you here in a moment if it hasn't. Be the change you want to see.